Hello, I'm Annette Young. In this special edition, we're coming to you from the Loire Valley, a region renowned for its vineyards and where women winemakers are beginning to make their mark. Here in France, about a third of the country's winemakers are now female. So we're asking if this is a trend that's been repeated across the world. An English woman, Fiona Beeston, has been both a wine merchant and wine journalist. But 10 years ago, she decided to take it a step further. She bought this parcel of land in Chinon in the Loire Valley. A decade on, you can now find her organic red wines at some of Paris's best restaurants. We went to meet her during this year's harvest. What made you decide to make the switch from being a wine journalist and writer to becoming a winemaker? So I was a wine journalist for quite some time and then I actually got fed up criticising other people's wines. And, um, and also I really was a very kind of organic in my heart and I was just getting fed up of living in Paris. And I thought I'd sort of make the jump. But I had no idea what I was throwing myself into. I, no idea. What do women winemakers bring to the table? For example, when a wine producer comes to visit your vineyard or you go and visit a vineyard, the first thing they do is, if they're looking at the vines, they'll kick the vines or might even pee on the vines, which, of course, girls just don't do. And we tend to sort of stroke the vines, kneel down, feel how the vine is growing, how the sap is going. So that's already just the initial approach to, to the vine itself. How difficult is it for female winemakers? Uh, nowadays, I don't think it is that hard, but when, um, when I first started visiting wine producers, uh, women were actually not even allowed in cellars because they said while the wine was fermenting that women could actually turn the wine. Uh, now, obviously, that has changed. But um, I don't know actually how many women are really hands-on. I mean, I'm, you know, I do all the pruning myself. I do everything. I've got a very small vineyard. But, um, and you know, I do the picking and we do everything by hand. And, um, but I think more and more women are getting that way. We've seen a exponential rise in the number of female winemakers here in France. Do you think that has, as a result, impacted the industry? Are we shaking things up a little bit? I hope so, I really do. And um, I think there's a, there is- In what way? Well, I think we have a, a a better contact with the actual vine. So I think maybe a lot of us are more organic than men tend to be. Um, we've got that sort of fibre. Um, so maybe there's a bit more contact with nature. I think we're pushing it in that direction. Are you glad that you made that career change? I have never regretted it. I absolutely adore it. And every day I discover new things. And what is extraordinary actually is that you live with the season so that, for example, now we've just finished picking the grapes and normally you think, OK, great, you know, you can take some vacation, but in fact you're pulled by the next season that you have to, you know, keep on your feet and start planting and start doing this and it just never stops and it's fantastic, keeps you alive. <laughs> Fiona Beeston, thank you for your time. Thank you. And the gender revolution extends way beyond the vineyard. For instance, here in France, the number of enology students who are women numbers around 50%. But when it comes to the world of French sommeliers, it's a very different story, since only 25% are female. But women are starting to dominate the profession in places such as South Korea, Scandinavia and Latin America. For example, in Argentina, the national competition for the best sommelier in the country has been dominated by a woman since 2002. Nowadays in China, women make up some 47% of wine drinkers. There's also been an increase in the number of female winemakers. Charles Pellegrin went to meet some of the Chinese women who are breathing new life into the vineyards of the Middle Kingdom. This patch of land has given China some of its finest wines. A dry climate and irrigation from the Yangtze River provide the perfect conditions for this year's harvest. Wang Fang built this domain in 2011 after moving back home from Germany. 
Her wines have since won several international awards, and 2020 isn't looking too bad either. It's healthier than we expected because of the uh, raining last weekend. Why are women playing such a huge role in China's young wine industry? She believes that it's especially suited for them as it requires patience. And that's given her an opportunity to build something of her own from the ground up. I was in Germany uh, as a housewife. Yeah. So I'm also pretty proud of, my, proud of myself that I could uh, build up this winery with, with, uh, from zero. Just down the road, Sun Miao is part of the same group of female winemakers. She and her husband lived in France for seven years and now run this small biodynamic vineyard. She enjoys being surrounded by a tight-knit community of women that support each other in all aspects of life. We're together a lot to discuss things over a drink. Women are more efficient. They'll even come to work with their babies. We talk a lot. Chinese women aren't just producing wine, they're drinking it too. Ashley Gao is a sommelier in an upscale hotel, a perfect vantage point to see the face of the typical Chinese consumer change over the years. From older businessmen keen on impressing their clients and partners to a younger, more female crowd. Well, I think before, like, people drinking wine is only uh, for business purpose, like business meal or, uh, or gatherings or, uh, you know, the relations with, uh, with government or, or uh, companies. But right now, people drinking wine are for their own purpose, like enjoyment. Whether they're in the cellar or among the vines, women have transformed China into the fifth largest wine consumer in the world. And they show no signs of slowing down. Are we ready? Okay. As more and more women enjoy a sip, Paris-based Cynthia Kutu is determined to spread the word about the best female-made champagnes and sparkling wines on offer. All right, ladies, now we can really get started. <laughs> The Canadian holds regular wine appreciation courses in the French capital. Cynthia, why the emphasis on champagne and sparkling wine? I was talking to a lot of women uh, and asking them about their preferences, and I kept meeting women who were big champagne lovers. And the more I was learning about champagne, the more I realized the role of women in the history. In the 18th century, the courtesans um, were the first really women um, to start drinking, um, grab a bottle, and go alone. Before that, um, women would eat at the table, uh, and that was about it. And when champagne with bubbles arrived in the 18th century, they were more than happy to grab a bottle between meals and drink by themselves. In the 19th century, you had all the innovation, Madame Picot, Madame Pommery. In the 20th century, during the First World War, Second World War, um, the women in Champagne uh, were really making, they were um, keeping the ship afloat. And I had a, a respect, the more I learned about the role of women in Champagne, and so that uh, made it taste even better. So what's been women's responses when they've come to your classes? A lot of women are, feel empowered when they leave uh, my classes because they know how to open a bottle properly. Um, if I had a euro for every time uh, a woman said, oh, this is the first time I'm opening a bottle, I could be on, in the Maldives somewhere right now. I often get a wow. I had no idea that there was that much to learn and I feel like I can walk out and I know what I like now and why and how to get the best bang for my buck. And they also tell me that um, if they had to choose between a champagne made by a man and one by a woman, that they would love to support female champagne producers. And so they just want a list of addresses of uh, champagnes made by women to support them. So is there a difference between a female wine consumer and a male wine consumer? Yes. Um, when you look at the, the numbers, um, women by 75%, that's because they make their most of their purchases when they're doing the groceries for the week. Um, they'll pick up, grab a bottle or two for, uh, for the week, whereas men tend to buy the trophy bottles, uh, the expensive ones for the, to impress friends or a boss. And so the big differences are there. So it's all about empowerment, isn't it? 
I said it once as a joke, I empower women one bottle of champagne at a time. <laughs> you know, there's all kinds of ways of empowering women. I do it with a bottle of champagne. I empower the champagne producers, the women who come to the tastings, um, and I try to tell the stories about the women behind the bottles. Cynthia, thanks for your time. My pleasure. Cheers. That's it for this special edition, so until our next show, bye for now.